Hello and welcome to the Yarnings Podcast. I'm Christine and I'll be your host. This is episode 71. It is Thursday, October 27th, 2015. It is a cloudy day outside. (laughs) Uh, There have been sun breaks this morning. There was a beautiful purple haze in the sky. It's been really misty in the morning, probably as it's getting cooler, and I looked out the window and it was all lavender out there. It was so gorgeous. There's a picture on my Instagram if you want to see. Welcome to episode 71. I'm calling it Jewelry Party. This will be the episode of mini wardrobe changes, so you can see some different things. Sounds like fun. Or I think it sounds like fun. So I'm hoping that because you like my show, you will think it's fun too. (laughs) So let's move in to some life stories. Um, it hasn't been that many days since I recorded. I did record on Thursday morning, Friday, I don't remember. It was quite early, I know that. (laughs) Um, but I wanted to get this episode posted before the jewelry party, so, um, there has just been a lot of stuff going on with the renovations. The floor is all down. As of today, the countertop is down. Um, it's just getting ex- most excellent, and I am really super excited. Um, I have two blog posts up now that you can go look at some of the in-process pictures and the before pictures and see my status as of yesterday morning. So things like the countertop being in, that has only happened just hours ago. There's not even any pictures on Instagram yet. <laughs> that may change, but right now it's covered in plastic again so that the texturing of the wall could be done. So there's lots of work being done. Lots of things that, for the balance here, let's see if we can shift a little better. There we go. Lots of things that my brother, the contractor is working on and I am really excited. Did I say that already? (laughs) All right. So I think I will explain how I'm going to do this jewelry party thing right off the bat. Um, So I attended a online jewelry party that was for Java Jenny and um, Denise, who is mad about Matisse on Ravelry, what is a person who sells Chloe and Isabel jewelry. And I really like what I've gotten. So I'm hosting a party too. And I'm sharing it with you guys because that just sounded like a lot of fun. Denise will be doing an actual, like, set time where there will be games. There is also some, um, a prize thread up on the boards already. Um, so stay tuned to the boards for all of the fun information on the Ravelry group. If you're not on the Ravelry boards, I will also have a thread on Facebook for my non-Ravelry friends to participate. I know there are a couple of you that um, are not as cra- not as likely to get onto the Ravelry boards and still watch the show. Thank you. Um, and so I want to make sure that you get an opportunity to play along too. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some of the ways that I style knitwear and jewelry. I will show you some of the outfits that are behind me. I will be changing, doing wardrobe changes, and I will also be brainstorming ideas for pieces that I want to get for my upcoming knits or the knits that are in process because it's it's a good time to be thinking about that so that I can maybe get one or two items for myself. I'm also going to get some gifts. Um, We don't do Christmas gifts for everybody in the family, but for the people that I do know, I think that they would appreciate something pretty and shiny to add to their life. So there will be some gifts coming that way. So you can check out the Ravelry boards for more about the contests. I will put links to my my party, um, the purchasing link, so that if you don't want to play along with the games for some reason, you can still buy. So 
let's move into some yarnings and some adventures in knitting. Let's turn my show notes back on here. Let's see if I can prop them back up how I used to. There we go. I've got a little um, gorilla tripod that sits up there. And the last couple weeks I have been sitting and so I haven't needed it. So right now I am wearing, before I start my, my yarnings, right now I am wearing pink dress, my donut squared cowl that I made last year, and my pretty pink bracelet. This is the leather and baguette bracelet. It has three different strands of things and it clasps in the back with an actual, an actual, um, what do they call those? The little clampies. <laughs> um, and I like that because it feels like it's going to keep in place and I don't have to choose a specific size. I can just go into any of those holes. There was another color, I think black, but I, I obviously liked the pink. The pink is easy for me to add into anything, whether it's crazy or more subtle, as you'll see in a while. For Yarnings Knitting Adventures, I was actually trying to knit on air, <laughs> which may have been silly, but I know I'm on a rest row, <laughs> on my On the Motorway. And it has had just a little bit of work on it since I talked to you last. Um, I added a set of decreases because I started out with a much wider lower part um, than I will need at the upper part. And there is plain stockinette on the sides. So I'm giving myself a little more ease at the bottom and then very gradually I'm going to take away some of those extra stitches. Um, what else can I say that I didn't say last week? Cables are working up nicely. I keep forgetting to write down who the designer on this is. Knits in Class is the person that is doing the knit along on the boards. I don't know if that's the actual designer. Adrian Larson. Let's see if that's Knits in Class. Nope. Adrian Larson. Adrian, Adrian L. Larson. Okay, so the person that is doing the knit along is not the designer. <laughs> so, Adrian Larson, designer on the motorway in, in Blue Moon Fiber Art Socks That Rock, heavyweight in the barrel colorway. And I am liking it. So, first whip. Second whip. I didn't bring my pile of washcloths in to show you for some reason. No, don't fall. But I did bring, I got a new Swiffer. We are going to have all laminate floors downstairs. It looks like wood. And so I'm going to be Swiffering more often. So, because I'm crazy, no, not because I'm crazy, because I want to be able to have something that is reusable and not just disposable, because that might make me less likely to sweep. Because I think, oh, I don't want to waste another one. <laughs> it's silly, but mentally it makes sense to me. I am making a Swiffer cover. I am doing it two at a time. Then I'll have two ends, I'll knit it two well, there-ish. Then I'll separate and just um, knit. I will stop knitting in the round, knit flat, and then Kitchener together at the center. That's the theory. So we will see how that works. When I try it on here, I feel like I haven't knit very much. <laughs> it's quite wee still, but um, I wanted to have enough negative ease so that it stays on there. I think that will be good. So yeah, that is my experiment. And I am knitting it with kitchen cotton. So back when I was a very, very new knitter, I decided to make my mom some place mats. My mom's favorite color is black, so of course. So I did black placemats and added in random other colors throughout. 
um, just as single row stripes. And I had, I think, four cones of black cotton. I have at least three of those left. <laughs> so, because I wanted to do this two at a time, I thought, okay, I'm just going to do it with the black cotton because I have so much of it. And then if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to feel bad if I have to throw it away. With some of the other colors, I used them. So, didn't really want to just do it with the white for the first prototype. So, that's the story behind that. All right. Um, next whip. Hello, iPad. Um, my socks went with me in my purse several times, but I don't think that I actually knit on them. <laughs> and my well-traveled vision it's got some good work on it. Although it's not too much to look at, it felt like it was quite a long time of work on it. I am at 12 rows of the mesh and the beautiful beads and I still have quite a few beads and so I'm going to keep going at least one more repeat before I do a beaded pico bind off. That's the theory. I might do a beaded pico bind off with a bead every three picos, just like I've been doing for the mesh. So that'll take a little while, but at least it will be, I'll know that I'm finishing. I'm, I'm ready to be, to be done with it. It's been a wonderful project, but the mesh does definitely take a different level of concentration than the rest of it did. And so, although I love the results, the process isn't quite as fun for me. It's still fun. I enjoy beading. It's just a little monotonous because it's not like I'm doing an interesting thing. It's just every three. and I've been doing it while watching TV and stuff, though, so it is coming along. Oh, okay. So with this, because it's going to be a cowl, it's not something to wear necklaces with. There's just... You wouldn't see it. It's gonna cover my cover my neck. So unless I wear a necklace on the outside, that would be silly. Oh, and the leaf blowers are outside. I can hear them. Um, so I'm thinking a really nice bracelet would go really nice with this. Or there are some earrings. Where did you go? I, maybe I didn't mark them. Next page. There they are. So these earrings right here, the creme brulee ball drop earrings, have the same goldy pinks, rose gold pinks, as the beads that I'm putting in. So I think that could be a really cool match to wear with this. The other jewelry choice that I had thought of while I was going through here um, is four on the motorway, my beautiful green here, um, the lunette necklaces. Maybe one of these. They're simple, but they are classy. And because they're longer necklaces, you can see on the model on this page here that it's a longer necklace. And so then it would not disrupt the cables. Oops, I dropped the business card inside of there. Um, I'm not sure if the, the blue beads on the first one on this page are going to clash too much with the green. So the second one might be the better option, and that is F Lunette Long Station Necklace, Semi Precious White Turquoise, Clear Crystal Pave, Antique and Worn 12 carat gold plated lobster claps clasp lobster clap clasp that's what I was thinking of and then the other one is the lunette long pendant necklace it does have a beautiful pendant on it and I'm sure I would find some really cool ways to wear that I just don't know if the white turquoise is it the white turquoise at Amazonite Amazonite maybe 
up there. I don't know if that would clash with my with my color. So those are some of the ones I'm thinking of for my works in progress. The needle adjacent project, my nephew came and wanted to use my ball winder today. Um, he was here helping his dad, my brother the contractor, <laughs> and they were getting the countertop people going. And so Leonard wanted to know what the Swift was, so I started to show him. <laughs> so we balled up two cakes of daisy knits. This is the petal base in the Thinking of Mel colorway, and I have two of them. Alpaca merino silk, 550 yards. Worsted-ish, worsted Erin, um, gauge-wise. I haven't done a gauge swat yet, yet, just using what it says on the um, Rev page. But that's 1,100 yards of, yes, 1,100 yards of a beautiful bluey gray. So this is a little more neutral than I normally pick. The way I'm going to make it special is my cheesecake hand spun, which has all these pretty colors in it. And I think it's gonna look really cool if I do some kind of a yoke, maybe very lightly color worked neckline and then use this for the rest of the body of some sort of a top, maybe short sleeve that I could wear, a long sleeve t-shirt underneath. I just think that's gonna be really cool together. So I think this is my needle adjacent project. And the most, the most awesome thing that I really, really wanted last time I purchased stuff is this Seascape leather wrap bracelet. I think it has enough of these colors in it that it could be super cool with this top. And then wearing some long dangly necklace over top of a yoke cardigan could be really cool or just a little heart around my neck. So that is needle adjacent. All right, so we are going to do a quick wardrobe change and I'll be right back. All right, so we are back for spinning a tail. For net, so now wearing, I am wearing my hand spun American Oak tunic, um, my Haruni shawl because it's a single color for the most part. It's a very lightly tonal colorway. And so it doesn't overpower the stripes. And I think this amount of lace is okay because it is a solid color to go with these stripes. So because this is such a nice long V on this dress. I think the V of a long necklace, even though the neckline is asymmetrical, I think that having this go down the middle is really nice. So this is the three row palette graduated pendant in silver. And they're kind of a hammered texture. It's got three of these things and you can detach them I believe, and make it into, well, maybe not. Let me tell you for positive. Yes, it's a three-in-one convertible necklace. You can do it as one, two, or three, making it a really cool, there, how about that way? A really cool value because I can wear it multiple ways. So I like that a lot. So I put this on because we're gonna talk about spinning. So spinning a tail. I have quite a bit more on my spindle. I have finally caught my groove and found what weight this yarn wants to be spun as. I need it to focus a little better. Um, it is spinning up really fine. There is enough color variation that it, <laughs> it barber pulls on itself even as a really fine single. I think that if I two-ply it, 
it will be a lace weight. Might be a th if I three ply it, maybe fingering. Um, but yeah, I finally caught my groove. At the beginning, I was having a really hard time fighting with it to try and get it the weight I wanted it to be. Now I'm listening to what it's telling me what it wants to be. So I may find that what's at the beginning of this this cop is not the same weight as what's towards the end. And that's okay. I'll, I'll figure that out. I still have this much. This is Nidian Color um, Ultralight at Night. And it's really pretty. I got it from a D-Stash. It's super soft. And yeah, it's just taken a little while because I'm spinning it so fine, but it's going to be something really pretty and I'm going to enjoy it. I think that could be a really nice um, light figuring lace weight shawl, maybe a citrone, because I love my citrone. In fact, I was going to bring that out and use it in one of my looks for today, but it's just getting pretty worn out. And so I think to actually be able to use it, I need to... I don't know. It even I reblocked it and it's still it's pretty pretty out of shape. So <laughs> I think it's time to make a new one. <laughs> okay, so a stitch through time, I think, is what I am saying. The multi-craftual is getting renamed to just for sewing. Sewing could mean sewing machine not too long from now. I saw that Costco had a really good deal on a sewing machine and I got all jazzed thinking, okay, I'm just going to go get this before the deal is over. And then I did some more research and the one I was looking at really had better reviews. And so I'm sticking with the one I was looking at and I don't need to jump out and go buy it. Um, but I'm really excited about going and buying it. So my English paper piecing actually grew a great deal which is probably why my knitting didn't grow. But I now have four more, four more flowers. Half of the hexes that I had cut last Tuesday, I showed you guys that I had basted all of them by Friday morning when I recorded, and I have sewed half of that into hexes. I still have two. 56 divided by 2 is 28. I still have 28 hexes to turn into another four flowers. And I was trying out some different layouts this morning, and I think I'm going to go get one more color that will be a border type color. Maybe not for all the way around it, but to put in between stuff. Um, and I'm hoping to get to go do that this week. Maybe I can make it work so that I can go before my dentist appointment is kind of what I'm thinking. There's other stores I could go to, but I'd like to go back to Craft Warehouse because their selection was the best. So that's where that is going. Um, it is going to be a wall hanging. I still have lots of fabric so I can cut more. It's going to be fabulous. Stitching through time or stitch through time kind of has that time travel idea, but it's also about heritage and how much I like that what I'm doing is something that people in the past have done. And Leah, Leah, Leah Line suggested calling it a stitch in time, like a stitch in time saves nine. And I think a stitch through time sounds a little more like my geeky twist. So thank you, Leah. And I'm going to keep sewing. All right, so for knitting community I've already talked about. We're going to participate in the jewelry contests. <laughs> and it's time for another wardrobe change. Be right back. Okay, so now I am wearing my happy home cardi. This is the Contented Cardigan, Contented Cardi by Hannah Fettig. And it is so wonderful and soft. I have very nice, perfect for my arm sleeves. And I'm wearing my Harmonize cowl. This is my hand spun Harmonize. That's the short one. And for jewelry, this is the subtle way to have the touch of pink instead of the big wild dress version. Just a little touch of pink to go along with the classy hand spun 
the green and black. And then I might jazz it up with some sweet leg leggings because they've got the nice pink in them. It's one of my new pairs. Um, so this is a little bit more subtle way, depending on whether or not I wear it with the leggings or not. But still, I love the bracelet. So now playing. Um, didn't play any games. There's no space. But I actually did play a game. <laughs> it's under my switch through time. This is Ella Minis. Oh, and then to the other necklace that I'm put on is not a Chloe and Isabel, but this is my geeky one. Knitting is my superpower. So my Elementis is a little card game. It is basic and I had forgotten how to play it. We had given my nephew a copy and he suggested when he was over this morning, let's play a game. And so we pulled this out. We played like 10 games of it. Uh, there were people downstairs and it, he, it wasn't, wasn't a good place for him to be helpful. So we sat and played for a little bit. Um, goes really quick. You are collecting five elements. The star is a wild and then there is junk. There are also some Uno-like cards for discarding and moving and swapping. And so depending on the different cards, they have different... So the water can take out a stone or a fire from your hand or another person's hand. So you get to you get to interact and it's all really good fun and we were just having a really good time. The cards are really nice. They're just a nice deck of cards. They've got the nice cute symbols on them. It says ages seven and up. Um, two to eight players. I don't think I've played it with more than four. That would, eight would be quite crazy. That would be a lot. Let's see if it says how long. It does not. One of our friends gave it to us after we visited last, after he visited us for Game Storm a few years ago. So very nice present and it's a really cute one. And if you have kids of that age. I think we gave it to Leonard even when he was a little little younger. He was maybe he was six. Maybe he was seven. So um, I definitely there's there's no reading except for just these little action cards but the symbols are descriptive enough. So Ella Minis. Um, now watching Ages of Shield and Castle and then we watched Hellboy on Netflix the other night um, just because we wanted an action-y movie and we hadn't seen that for many many years so that was a good a good comic book one that I hadn't seen for a long time. Now reading same things as last time um, we just have been listening to Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett and we haven't gotten back to the Felicia Day. Um, Book of Cooking. A lot more grab-and-go um, jazzing up things in the freezer like chicken strips with frozen sweet potatoes and a bag of corn. That was easy, good. I put a little hot chili sauce. We did get more paper plates and more and got some plastic silverware for this week because we don't have water downstairs at all now. So not only do I have a toaster in the bathroom, I have a strainer I was using to wash grapes. <laughs> <laughs> and the silverware that need to be washed. So the one toilet is in there, and that's that's the only easy access sink at the moment. <laughs> so we're doing good. We're making do. It's all working out. Okay, time for another word. All right, now wearing. Let's fix my hair again. There we go. <laughs> Now wearing, uh, this is my over the top top in the Bumble Birch yarn that I just finished a couple months ago. And my color affection that I knit last fall, and I'm so excited that it's fall again that I get to wear these fancy colors. Uh, I think they look, I wore it year, I wore it several times, but now I'm going to really wear it. <laughs> and I think it works well with this berry color. I think, I think that can definitely go together. So my jewelry. 
This is, it's got some beautiful colors in there. This is the Bouquet Rouge Necklace. You can separate it and wear either piece together. I wore it for the first time with this top to Eric's high school uh, alumni thing, <laughs> reunion thing. Um, and I felt really put together and that was really great. I really am hoping to get another piece from this collection. The earrings are really pretty. There is a longer pendant that could be worn with these two. There's also a set of stackable rings, and I think that could be really neat. Um, so I'm hoping to get something, something from that collection. Um, there's also these um, code, color code plum earrings that I think would go really nicely with it. So yeah, this one is definitely my favorite and it's so nicely made. All the pieces are put together really well and I am just really pleased. It kind of has a little bit of a firmness to it to keep it in place a little more and so I really like this one. For fanciful chatter, <laughs> we've kind of been doing that throughout the episode. I will show you the lip color that I'm wearing. I'm not sure about this one yet. This is NYX Extreme Shine Lip Cream in Strawberry Jam and it's a little gooier than I'm used to. And so I put it on and then I blended it in. I know it's gonna have a lot more gloss if I don't do that, but I don't know that it's my style. I like the color. I just think this type of lip cream maybe isn't for me, but I do like the color, so I kept it on. And my eyes are nice and fancy today too. I used a combination of the Urban Decay Glinda palette and a couple other things to blend it all together. So that was really fun. And let's see. So, sweet legs. I got some more sweet legs. These ones that I showed you are one of the pairs. And I have two others that I got. One that looks kind of like Fair Isle or embroidery. They are really good leggings. And since I'm loving wearing cotton skirts, I and I'm figuring out how I can pair them with hand knit socks. I think it's going to be nice to have a few more as we go into the fall and winter. They layer really well. I mean, I wouldn't want to wear two pairs of them, but they layer under the other things really well. For happiness continues, I am just appreciating my girliness. That just is making me super happy. I have loved getting to put together these looks to show you guys even if you're not a big fan of buying jewelry, I hope that you had fun seeing some different ways that hand knits could be put together with other accessories. So that is really fun. And like I said, there'll be more stuff on the forums. We're going to have a contest of a jewelry item that I'm going to give away. So if you go to the thread for this episode, so episode 70 thread, I will have a prompt there so that you can be entered to win a prize from me. Denise will also be adding, having prizes from her. This one will be for me, and I'll probably include a couple of little small things from my gift stash of yarning stuff to share with you guys, something pampery and lovely. So that is something that you can go and participate in. So that will do it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You can follow me around on the internet. I am Christine with a K on Ravelry. I am KDLB, just the letters, on Instagram. The Yarnings Podcast Group is on Ravelry, and the show notes with links to everything that I talked about <laughs> is at Yarnings Podcast, all squished together. Okay, I hope you have a lovely, beautified day ahead of you, and I'll see you soon. All right, until next time, that's the story. Bye.